because I was living in Sydney and they were prepping in Sydney, um, I heard on the grapevine all of the preparations were going on and what they were doing, what their problems were, and I was, you know, laughing with them one minute and crying for them the next because there were problems. And, but thinking, I'm well out of that, that's okay. And then suddenly I was thrown into it. David Cohen from Variety here. This is Artisans, and our guest this week is cinematographer John Seal. Seal's many credits as DP include The English Patient, which won him an Oscar, and Witness. At 70 years old, he found himself out in the Namibian desert shooting Mad Max Fury Road. And in fact, he came out of retirement to do it. Well, I've come out of retirement after every movie for the last 15 years, and, and this was no exception. George rang. He gave me a meal to think about it with my wife and I decided I'd go back to work with him. What was George's pitch for this film and what was your reaction when you read the script? There wasn't much pitch in it. There actually wasn't a script as really? per se. No, it was 3,500 storyboards and you started in the top left of that wall and you finished on the bottom right of that wall. You walked around and you looked at 3,500 storyboards and that was the script. They actually did develop the entire story on storyboard. Almost like an animated film then, in some way. Exactly right, exactly right. It was hard to know who was more crazy. Me, or everyone else. There aren't many choices uh, at that stage for this type of film, because as you can imagine, the stunts, the coordination of those, the choreography of them, is all locked down. All of the stunts, major that they were, were choreographed for really, number one, safety of everybody involved. The dance of cars and trucks at high speed was essentially rehearsed endlessly in that 10 years of pre-production, so you couldn't really change anything. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! The film was, was never really a what-if film, which a lot of films can be. What if we do it this way? What if we use this angle? What if we shoot there? It wasn't that at all. It was, this is where it goes, because that's where the storyboard literally placed it. I had him on top of those war rigs, uh, up poles, underneath the, the, he was everywhere, operating cameras as well as lighting. And he's one of those great um, camera people who's got a tremendous calm, uh, no matter what's going on around him, and that's really great for the actors. I was the fly in the ointment because I love using multiple cameras. George was a little reticent at the beginning to use multiple cameras and cross shoot, but I love it. Once we did, we ended up with three and four in there, but there was still no confusion because the main camera was always George's camera. Well, that seems like a pretty important creative contribution to say, well, let's, let's put in a second, a third, or even a fourth camera. I've always thought so on all movies. I've been doing it for, well, 15, 18 years now using multiple cameras. Editors loved it, actors loved it, because they could just roll on. They could bounce off each other. They didn't have to follow any continuity guidelines. Um, the editor could cut for performance. And so I always used to think, well, that must make a better film. Let's go, let's use multiple cameras. You want to get through this? Do as I say. Why do you retire after every movie for the last 15 years? Well, I think I'm going to, and I, I keep thinking to myself, I should. But uh, they ring up and they've got these delightful scripts or a delightful location as well. And it's very tempting and I love helping to make films and I do love the industry. Be sure to share this video, click like, and if you have an idea for an Artisans episode, tell us in the comments. We love doing these videos, and your shares, likes, and comments are one thing you can do to help us keep on doing them. If you like cinematography, and let's face it, who doesn't, click on the box on the right to see our interview with the great Roger Deakins about Sicario, and click on the box on the left to see Salvador Totino talk about the making of Everest. That's an incredible story. To be sure you never miss an Artisans video, click on the box to subscribe. That'll get you on the Variety Channel. We have a new Artisans every week, so come back again soon. See you then.